every sport has those little intricacies that make it unique. A little while ago, we looked at the art of pitch framing while also examining what catchers do to fool the umpire to get those strike calls, the main culprit being Austin Hedges. Today, we will be looking at something completely different. Today's video is going to deal with not the trickery of a catcher, but the trickery of a pitcher. Fans rarely see a successful pickoff move. I imagine that the amount of successful pickoffs per season is around 1%. So when fans see multiple pickoff attempts in the same at bat, they will boo the pitcher. Unless it's the home team, in which case the fans probably want to boo, but they don't want to boo their own pitcher, so they're just stuck in some limbo of indifference. Knowing that the pickoff move is so rare to pull off, it's exciting when you see one, like a triple play. So, my goal today is to show the art of the pickoff move. And while there have been a few pitchers throughout history that had a deceptive pickoff move, our main pitcher today is a little different, and I'll show you in a minute. For now, let's start with some history. By definition, what is a pickoff move? According to MLB's glossary, a pickoff occurs between pitches when a pitcher throws a ball to a fielder who eventually puts out or assists in retiring an opposing base runner. An illegal pickoff attempt results in a balk. To add on to this definition, here's a picture that shows where the pitcher has to step. It's a fine line of whether a pickoff play is a balk and only the best are able to tiptoe on this line. Now, let's look at the all-time leaders in successful pickoffs and then we can analyze what they do that allows them to be so successful. This list is accurate until the start of the 2013 season because I cannot find any website that lists pickoff stats. So this post is from a thread on a baseball forum dating back to October of 2012, but the data is from Baseball Reference. So, the all-time leader in successful pickoffs is Steve Carlton, with a whopping 144 pickoffs. Although, you may have to take this stat with a grain of salt, because apparently pickoffs did not become an official stat until 1974, and Carlton had a total of 99 after 1974, which is still the most of all time, but not by a super wide margin. Still, Carlton is the best. Here is an example of his pickoff move. First, I'll show you the play, then we'll break it down. So, there are actually a lot of things going on here. Every little thing that Carlton does will influence what the base runner does. The base runner has to look at the feet of the pitcher so he knows where Carlton intends to pitch. Where the pitcher lands his foot indicates whether he commits a balk. He has to step towards first base. If he takes a step towards home plate and then throws to first, that's a balk. So, the pitcher needs to trick the runner. As Carlton picks up his leg, he stares at the base runner, which is a common thing that pitchers do. Now, as he picks up his leg a bit further and is at the height of his windup, he stares back at the catcher to indicate to the runner that he intends to pitch to the hitter. However, that's just what Carlton wants the runner to think. It doesn't matter where Carlton is looking. If his foot lands in the direction he intends to throw in, it's not a balk. In this frame, it looks like he's going to throw home, but then he quickly throws to first base, where the first baseman tags the runner out. So many little things are happening at once, and it takes a lot of practice to get right. In fact, listen to what the commentator says about the pickoff. Now watch Carlton's head, and you can see when he starts towards right there is when he's got Saxe leaning, and now he's got him picked off. Very similar to what I just described. Now, let's look at a more modern example. Here is a chart for the most pickoffs between 2009 and 2012. Clayton Kershaw has a case for best pitcher of the last decade. He also has one of the game's best pickoff moves. Again, I'll show you the move first. This one is a little different to Carlton's. Carlton didn't pitch from the stretch, or at least in the clip we watched, he didn't pitch from the stretch, while in this clip, Kershaw did. That just means that Kershaw isn't using his usual pitching delivery in order to keep up with the base runner in case of a stolen base attempt. So Kershaw is looking at the runner, he takes a deep breath, and then quickly faces towards home plate. But watch what his leg is doing. It's not going towards home plate, it is always going towards first base. His step is just too quick for the runner to realize in time. But that's just one aspect of pickoffs. Let's look at another one. Sometimes there is a runner on second base. 
This time, the key is not where your foot is facing, it's stepping off the rubber as you are turning around towards second base. Well, sometimes a right-handed pitcher will turn like this, so in that case, your foot placement does matter. However, I want to look at Clayton Kershaw again. He just stares at the runner, and instead of facing back towards home plate, he knows that he not only can turn around quickly, but he can take his foot off the rubber simultaneously. Because of this, he was able to pick off the runner. So, what have we gathered so far? Well, what matters most is your foot placement to avoid the balk, and where you're looking so you can fool the runner. Because the majority of pickoff attempts happen at first base, left-handed pitchers have the clear advantage compared to right-handed pitchers. If we look at the career pickoff leaders from earlier, only 3 of these 20 pitchers were right-handed. In fact, here's what the MLB glossary has to say. Left-handers, for instance, are generally much better at picking off runners than righties. Because most pickoff attempts occur at first base, lefties are facing first base before they pitch and can simply throw over, while right-handers must step off the pitching rubber and pivot before they throw. So, as you probably already guessed, right-handers have a major disadvantage to getting pickoffs at first base. For one, they are facing away from first base. Also, they have to step off the rubber and pivot before they throw, or else it's a balk. So what's the solution? Right-handed pitchers have to find a way to pick up their foot and pivot to first base as simultaneously as possible. Well, Zach Plesak's move is as simultaneous as you can get. If you don't know who Plesak is, he is a starting pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. 2019 was his rookie year in the majors, and in 21 starts, he performed relatively well. However, his pickoff move is what gained him notoriety from around the league. Here's an example of that move. It's almost like he jumps off the mound, turns around, and fires a fastball to first. Remember, the runner is only looking at his foot to see if he steps off the rubber. If he does, that indicates a pickoff move. But Plesak does this so fast that the runner can't react in time. In fact, through his first 9 starts in 2019, Plesak had 5 successful pickoffs, which led the whole league. Here's another pickoff from a different angle. Just look how quick he is. Sometimes you'll notice a right-handed pitcher stepping off the rubber before throwing to first base. With Plesak, it's unnoticeable. Here's a few random examples of a right-handed pitcher throwing a pickoff. They are all pretty fast, right? Now, look at a couple of Plesak's pickoffs. I don't know about you, but to me, Plesak's move just seems quicker. I've tried comparing Plesak with some other pitchers frame by frame, and honestly, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference in foot speed and technique. But for some reason, Plesak's move just seems faster. Couple that with the fact that Plesak got 5 pickoffs in 9 games, there has to be something else. Apart from the fact that Terry Francona said that Plesak has the quickest feet he has ever seen, it might have something to do with where Plesak rests his hands before he pitches. I say this because after the 5 pickoffs in 9 games, in Plesak's last 12 starts of the season, he only picked off one runner. What does his hands have to do with this? Well, apart from the fact that he has to use his hands to throw the ball to first base, he changed his mechanics mid-season. Plesak said, earlier in the season, I'd hold my glove kind of by my chest. That was right where I needed my throwing arm to be when I come set to go and pick a dude off. What I ended up doing was changing the levels of where my glove was on different pitches, not knowing. So I was tipping some pitches and that caused me to struggle after my 7th or 8th start. That's when they noticed it. Not only had Plesak been gaining the reputation as one of the best pickoff specialists in the league, the downside was he was tipping his pitches. If you go back to his 7th start of the season, it was arguably his worst outing of the season. And when you're giving up 7 earned runs to the Orioles, you know that there's something wrong with your mechanics. So Plesak made a change and started coming set at his waistline every time he pitched from the stretch in order to be more consistent and harder for a hitter to read. While the change worked in terms of hiding his intentions to hitters, it robbed him of his advantage over base runners. To show a comparison, here is where his arms rested on his first start of the year. And here he is in his 17th start. 
quite the difference. Plesak acknowledged that when you start your pickoff move from the waist, you've still got to bring it up. It's like a tenth of a second and it's still really quick. But I think early when I would have come set at my chest, it was that much quicker. So what he's saying is that the difference may seem minute, but it's significant enough for the runners to read. Does this mean that Plesak's reign of terror was only temporary? Not necessarily. He still has what Francona considers the fastest feet he's ever seen. So I'm sure he can adjust and go right back to picking off base runners and making other pitchers jealous. I have to say though, it's been pretty difficult for me to spot intricate differences between Plesak's pickoff move with other right-handed pitchers. For me, the eye test says that Plesak may be the best pickoff specialist among current right-handed pitchers, but I can't say that definitively, and that really annoys me. This isn't like pitch framing where at least there are metrics that can help me out. I don't have a conclusive answer to who has or who had the best pickoff move. Maybe John Boy can help me out. But what I can say is that the pickoff move may not be the most exciting thing about baseball, but it's definitely unique to baseball. And that's good enough for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to stick around. Thanks for watching.